All right, today we are talking about editing wildlife photos. As many of you know already, I love wildlife. It's one of my favorite subjects to shoot, shoot, sorry, <laughs> but it's also one of the hardest subjects to shoot and especially edit. So today we're going to be working from image A, which is the before, and trying to get to that image B, which would be the after in that case. And so what I'm trying to achieve with that picture, even though the raw file in itself looks really nice, um, I, I want the bird to pop more, I want its colors to show more, I want it to have more texture, and I want to kind of forget the background. So that's the idea with this tutorial, is really bringing into the forefront an animal that you've captured and really making it shine. Let's get right to it and start with the basics. So I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little because it's a bit underexposed and bring up the contrast. This is usually what I do. I like to add contrast to raw files um, to bring out some of those blacks. Um, what else? I'm going to bring down the highlights real fast. That's just the style I like working with. I don't like having many highlights in my photos, so that's usually what goes first, the highlights. Then I bring up the shadows to have sort of a more even picture in that case. Let's see, bring down the whites a little bit and bring that back the blacks. Okay, so just so you can see, this sort of brings the image to life a little bit already. So we'll start with that. After that, what I really want to focus on today is using using these tools right here, the presence tools. So you have texture, clarity, and dehaze, and I think they're really, really useful especially when editing wildlife photos when you have those textures you know hairs or for for that matter in in that case the the feathers they could just be a lot sharper in my opinion so i like messing around with those so i'm gonna bring up the textures quite a lot i'm gonna use the dehaze tool which i absolutely love and just discovered not long ago actually so you see how it changes it just sort of dehazes everything and makes everything quite sharp. I'm gonna use a little bit of clarity, but not too much. I'm actually not so much of a fan for clarity. All right, it's looking much better now, but as you can tell, when I use these tools like texture and dehaze, the background tends to get really, really grainy, and that just bothers me. I do not like it. But don't worry, there's a way to fix that, and um, it actually is extremely useful, especially when you're working with photos that have sort of that shallow depth of field. As we see here, um, the bird is really the focus of the photo. The background is just secondary in that case. So let's see how we can work that out and make it less grainy. So we're gonna use a tool that I found very, very useful, and that is, oh, I skipped it. Uh, that is the noise reduction tool. So let me zoom in so you can see what happens a little better. All right, bump it up. Don't be scared. You see? You see how the background is just getting smoother and smoother? And the detail is just, you know, fine tuning whether or not you want detail in that picture. In my case, not really. The less detail, the better. So that background really blurs out for you. And you have the focus of the bird, and the bird sort of pops out of the background a lot better without that graininess. So just so you can see on a more larger scale, this is with zero nose reduction. This is when you bump it up. Um, I'm gonna go not too too crazy so maybe somewhere around 60 is pretty good and add some sharpening too all right this is starting to look a lot more like what I had in mind um, we're not quite done yet okay I'm gonna fix this because it's bothering me <laughs> it's not much of a big deal but I think it's either it's the, um, the hummingbird's tongue or it's some nectar that's left over from a flower it's been to but I just find that a bit distracting so I'm gonna blur it out with the stamp tool Ta-da! it's gone perfect all right next up I want to yeah just bring in some light here but what I really want to do is use a mask tool to make my bird sharper and to make my background less distracting still. So I'm going to use that mask and bring down the background a little bit. You see how the bird is starting to separate itself even more from the background because it has this sort of light shining on it. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing down the exposure here on my cursor, which means that anything that's outside of that circle is going to receive the effect, so it's going to be less exposed in that case. What I'm going to do is bring down the saturation as well, because I find the saturation of the background to be a bit distracting, and I really want my bird to pop. There we go. It's popping. All right. 
Last step, we're almost done because I'm quite satisfied with that photo. Let's see how it looks from before. Yes, this is starting to look great. Um, is We're going to mess around with the colors, which is something I really love doing. And I usually keep for last because I find it so interesting. So what you want to do is, I'm sorry, my computer is burning up. Uh, you can hear it's, it's um, fan, but that's okay. Um, so what you do working with color is you look at your picture and you ask yourself, what colors do I have in that picture right now? I'm seeing some green, I'm seeing some yellows, I'm seeing some blues. So I'm going to be messing around with those cursors. The rest aren't going to affect my picture, so there's no point in me investigating. Obviously this is way too extreme, but I'm just trying to find the right shade. I think it's pretty good where it is actually. What's really interesting to me is that blue that I see there, and I want to, you know, I want to make it come out a little more. So. I think it's actually more of an aqua, so let's see, yes, it is more of an aqua. So I'm going to bring it up so it's really sharp, bring up the saturation of that blue as well so it pops a little more. What about the luminance? Yeah, bringing up the luminance of the green is actually quite helpful. It makes the burb, um, the bird, not burb, sorry, but pop even more in that case, so it's good. Uh, let's see what we could do with the hue of the yellow. So yellow can go either in the green direction or yellow can go in the, you know, more brownish, traditional yellow direction. Um, so I'm going to take it there because I want those yellows to separate themselves from the other greens. And I actually like when the luminance is upwards a little bit. All right. There you go. I think we're done. I think this looks perfect. Well, I guess if you want to get really perfectionate, um, you could, let's see, let's put all these cursors back to zero, we don't want to affect the picture, is putting more sharpness in the bird specifically. So let's zoom into that bird here. Actually, it's just a little, a little too much. Right here, and you just take the, the pen tool and you go on the bird and you make it just a tad bit sharper uh, to really have its feathers show. There you go. All right, we are officially done. It looks great. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this is useful and helpful for you. Uh, definitely subscribe, check back in. I'll post more tutorials if you like them. So leave me a comment if you want more Lightroom tutorials. I'm happy to share those skills with anyone who's interested. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great week.